as they, they, who said that the process was opaque. Should they be lauded for standing by what they thought was the truth at the <laughs> time? Or should they be mm. held to account and be hounded out of office? Well, j just give me a minute to uh, just uh, put a comment on the issue of the fuel okay. uh, subsidy and, and say that, um, uh, you, you know, Kenya is a country where we are inheriting when it is in ICU. The truth of the matter is, and it was clearly indicated uh, during the swearing-in ceremony, uh, the country doesn't have anything in the coffers. We have to contend with the repayment of our debts as 60% of uh, our uh, revenues that we are uh, collecting. And uh, at, at the same time, uh, we are subsidizing these uh, oil marketers. But at the same time, um, most of them are not reflecting the same to the, uh, the, 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 the consumers. They're still claiming what you have subsidized them. And at the same time, the government itself also is also delaying to submit these subsidies, mm. revenues, to the oil marketers. So it's a cycle which is not just adding up. And that has caused the distortions that you see in prices. That has caused the distortions that you see in terms of supply. That is what is even, uh, is, is, is even uh, creating the issue of hoarding and all that. And, and if you can remember, uh, just a while ago, when uh, the handshake government was in force, mm -hmm. uh, we had... Um, no supply at the pump uh, station mm. when there was so much fuel in the country. Mm. And this went on for so long. And yet, the subsidy still existed. Mm. Uh, the supply was so much in the country. And the prices were relatively low. Yeah. But we couldn't access this commodity. In fact, we were buying through jerry cans and all that. A friend of mine described the situation as a case where uh, Peter is uh, robbing Paul but not paying Paul. And Peter is also not getting any benefit at all. So everyone has been losing from this subsidy program. And so the best thing has been stop it first and let us reorganize. And I'm sure the government will be able to reorganize this within the shortest time possible. So I would like to tell our viewers there is hope and there's so much hope that things are going to work out well. Remember, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is in office only for three days. And at least you can see someone who is determined to work out things to help Kenyans. Mm -hmm. It's not like the fuel prices were low anyway. They were very high. And, and, and so we, we are going to have the Kenya Kwanzaa government working around uh, the clock, ensuring that every uh, coin is saved. We don't lose any money uh, through uh, some of these dealers. And, 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 and so th there's hope in as far as the uh, cost of living coming down is concerned, never mind uh, some of the challenges that we're having in the short term. Now, we have the four commissioners that uh, were uh, the, 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 you can easily call them the, the, the opaque four. And uh, they had very interesting and very weird reasons as to why they could not agree with the results that they had themselves had formulated, had uh, tallied. Uh, let me not say formulated, but let me say tallied. The results they had themselves tallied. <clears throat> it's uh, very strange that these four commissioners thought it wise to want to vote on our vote. It is very uh, suspicious that these four commissioners uh, only realized that uh, they had been forced or they had been coerced or they had been manipulated or they had been denied access to the information only at the very last minute. Even though what they say they were denied, we could see them on TV, live TV, uh, announcing those results. It's even more weird that they reacted when uh, the so-called NSAC, yeah. uh, the National Security uh, Council and their representatives went and had a discussion with, with that team and they apparently differed, or allegedly differed on that uh, uh, recommendation of moderation of our vote. Um, now, these commissioners know very well, they were put in office uh, with the reasons uh, for ensuring that they somehow help whoever their masters were to have a certain candidate announced as the winner. They know very well that was the reason why they were put in office. And I, and I pity them because you, you don't want to be the one to be given some work, 
Sometimes you all want to build the cut. I mean, sometimes we want the cut build. But oh, unto you, if you are the one who is given the, uh, if you are the rat which is given the work of bailing the cut, because you might just be consumed alive. Now, these four commissioners found themselves in the, this most unfortunate and awkward situation where they were supposed to be acting for their masters, and their masters did not facilitate them sufficiently, adequately, and in a timely manner as to help them, assist them to deliver whatever results they were supposed to. I mean, their masters sat back comfortably and hoped by some miracle these four commissioners would still deliver. Now, unfortunately, they found themselves in the wrong side of the law because they queried results which were, uh, were, were, were transparent, which were in an open server, which were clearly tallied properly. They knew very well that commission was not about the commissioners. The commission was about the returning officers. The commission was about the voters. The commission was about what was happening at the polling station. And so by the time these results are coming to the commissioners, they have no much power on these results. I mean, these four commissioners now still wanted to moderate these results which were coming from the returning officers who were all over the country. Now, they are in the most unfortunate situation because now their masters are not there, their masters are gone. They executed an illegal plan. They did a very weird uh, attempt to try and uh, uh, bring about a coup to a, legit, a legitimately uh, elected government. Though all these things you're saying were not pronounced by the Supreme Court, you know. I am pronouncing now. Supreme I am now. I am now the one pronouncing. But you don't have the I'm now the, <laughs> no, you, you can't just, say I don't have the authority. I'm, I'm just, I just want to hear your argument the, when this petition comes to the, you know, the House, you know, which, which you will be in. You know, I, 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 you can't say I don't have authority to pronounce. But how, the, 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 not the, No, the that. Supreme Court gave the basis. When the Supreme Court declared them uh, uh, out of order, and uh, uh, I mean, then we are now supposed to infer from this judgment and make our own opinion, informed opinion for that, for that purpose and for that matter. And, and, and of course, then when it comes to the floor of the house, you don't expect any different argument. We will you know, still uh, push the same argument because uh, these commissioners, not only are they supposed to be removed from the commission, but they're also supposed to have uh, treasonable uh, charges uh, preferred against them in the court of law. So that them, together with their um, accomplices that were making these arguments on the issue of, uh, of um, uh, moderation of votes. I mean, how do you attempt to overthrow an, a validly uh, elected and legally elected government. Okay. And, and, and so that has cost us so much as a country, caused so much tension. Yeah. I'm, I'm told by there, for example, when uh, we were all watching TV, every, everything looked so peaceful up to the last minute when senators and elected leaders and you know, officials uh, went and took uh, a violent attempt to try and uh, topple the tables and all that. I'm told, and, and this happened in some of the families where the whole family was watching TV and, and, they, and then all of a sudden the, the, the violence came about and they were watching. I'm telling you some of the children were screaming. Some of the children were crying. They were clutching on their parents. And, 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 and this really is a situation that uh, we were put in yeah. by these opaque four. Okay, all right. And Jared, what will be your argument when this comes to the, parliament, to the floor of parliament? Because it's already there. It's actually been received in parliament. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, uh, two, two quick things before I come there. My friend Gerard Gay talked about a functional democracy where the president has pronounced himself that he will employ uh, a greater access to checks and balances of his government. The same president buying people from Azimio to join his side to kill the same democracy he's now talking about. Would you blame the president for that or the people from Azimio who are shifting to the other side? The president. I blame the president for that. <laughs> but he's not forcing anyone to shift. <laughs> How would you blame him and not the people who are shifting? Have you been approached to shift? How come you haven't shifted? Well, they know me. They know me. <laughs> they know me. I'm a man of principles and honor. They, they know. They can't the even dare. We should be blamed. Yeah, they can't even dare. Even the two here cannot even persuade me to do that. But anyhow, uh, the, the brother here talked about the country in ICU, uh, that they are inheriting a country that is uh, 
uh, almost uh, bankrupt, almost. A country where the deputy president has been sitting in the same government for 10 years and is now starting his 11th year as president, but the country is still in ICU. And therefore you can see why the escalated prices of items under the same government that has subjected us into this ICU for the last 11 years. You've asked a fundamental question. Uh, Article 119 of our constitution gives every Kenyan an opportunity to petition parliament over any subject matter. Uh, Farmers Party, a proxy of Kenya Kwanzaa, and their sponsors here have really confirmed that this is their petition have come before parliament to discuss the conduct of Cherera Four, uh, the four commissioners who walked out uh, during the tallying at Bomas of Kenya. Firstly, the merit of that petition will have to be ascertained, and I want to believe that the new speaker uh, will rise above parochial party interests and look at the bigger picture of these four commissioners in, regarding, uh, in regards to uh, the petition that has been brought before parliament. If it does not merit, if it does not reach the threshold, because not all petitions brought before parliament are subjected to debate, some fall below the threshold and will have to be thrown out. And I think this is one of them. But if political interest will override uh, the tenets of our laws, and they allow this to come before parliament, then we are there to listen, to debate, to defend when necessary. We saw how the four commissioners read wrong results at the Bombers of Kenya, results that had to be recalled to be corrected. Kiambu, for instance, had a 10,000 votes over and above what William Ruto got, and that had to be corrected. Uh, the other commissioner read another one that had, I think, 20,000 over and above what had been allocated to William Ruto, and that had to be recalled. And therefore, punishing these people for reading wrong results that they never verified beforehand, just because a, uh, a chairperson has mandated them to go and read them and embarrass them in the international glare of cameras, these are matters of facts that we will also have to interrogate, even as uh, that, uh, th 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 that petition comes before parliament. So it is still feeding into the notion that this was an opaque verification. The opaque verification has led us into the quagmire that we have as a country today. Now, why they are being put on the chopping board is because they exercise the democratic right to come up with a dissenting view. Judges, the Supreme Court judges, have this tradition where you are allowed, not even Supreme Court judges, even the appellate court, the Court of Appeal, you are allowed to write a dissenting view. You either express it or you write it. And the Supreme Court of 2017, that harshly indicted this same person who is now their hero, called Chebukati and the other two, had a dissenting view of two judges who were not in consonant with the decision of 2017. And these two judges, even though they walked out of what would then have amounted to a unanimous decision, yeah. were not indicted at all because they exercised their democratic right. Okay. This Cherera Four simply exercised their democratic right. You remember the same Supreme Court now, which is being held by my gentleman here, found that these commissioners were actually given peripheral duties, which the courts call domestic chores. Now, it now moves from domestic chores, and now they are being hunted, hunted like, like a lion for just exercising what ought to really have happened uh, at the time. The big question is, and I want the country to know this, Chebukati and company, and company, I mean the two, Gulie and Molu, are retiring in January, okay? They have finished their term of duty, even though bungling two elections in a row. Two elections. One, 
nullified by no simple court but the Supreme Court of Kenya. And, this, and the other one unanimously upheld by that same court. By the same you court. You can't say two, you can only say one. Yeah, by the same court. So in 2017, the courts found that illegalities and irregularities were conducted by the same IEBC. If you were to talk about somebody who had an intention to topple the leadership of a country, then it is those three who still exist in office to date. But now there is a way that the new Supreme Court has washed them and they're now so clean that the four who did nothing but to express their democratic right are now being put on the chopping board. We will not allow that to happen. But do you even have the numbers as the opposition to take a substantive stand? You're the one who said that most of your people are the other side. Even if the UDA team decide that that is what they're doing, do you, can you do anything about it? Well, removing a commissioner is not a walk in the park. That is just a petition before parliament, which will be debated, and the decision of uh, parliament is not, never final. You still expect this matter to move Tribunal. all the way, yeah, tribunals yeah. all the way, and even court. The court will get involved. So it may still go back again to the Supreme Court. But I wanted to make a few, uh, a, a few things, uh, put a few things into perspective. Why they are being hunted is that when the three retire in January, yeah. you will still have four who by the imagination of Kenya Kwanzaa are not aligned to them. So that the three that will come into office will be probably, not probably, but will have to be employed or rather given that job by the sitting president. So by their calculation, they already see a fierce four against three who will come into office courtesy of their involvement. So they think that they still have a problem. So they are using people like farmers' party as proxies to bring this matter so that this people can be hounded out of office, and then they will have a reconstitution of a new IBC, seven aligned to Kenya Kwanzaa. So these people are not being, you know, uh, frog marched out of office because of any transgression of any law, because no one has really uh, found them culpable for anything. In fact, it is the Supreme Court that could have found them culpable for any misconduct. The same Supreme Court said, and let me make it clear, that they were not going to be dragged into a dysfunctionality of IEBC. You remember they filed two separate affidavits from IEBC, and a decision had to be made uh, on which one to stand. Yeah. And the Supreme Court judges said, please don't involve us into a dysfunctionality of your own commission. Okay. Now, when you talk about a dysfunctionality of any, a, a, any, anybody, including here uh, at Citizen, then you're talking about the head, which is the bosses here. So in essence, they were talking about the dysfunctionality of Chebukati, who could not marshal his troops for the common interest of the country. Okay. I wish Farmers' Party could have done the right thing by bringing a petition against Chebukati, Molu, and Boyu. Instead of these innocent four uh, who, who, who just did nothing but the right thing uh, uh, before, uh, before the country. Okay. So uh, it is important to say that uh, when the matter will come before us, yeah. we are going to defend them, okay. both inside the house, outside the house, and even on citizen TV. Okay. We will defend them. <laughs> so they should not worry. We are there to defend them with the truth. Yes, and not, okay, not trivializing anything. A quick one on the issue of uh, uh, mass defections to Kenya Kwanzaa by Azimio, you, uh, Azimio affiliate parties. You remember most of these people have said on record that they were forced to be in Azimio, and we know the reason. Like uh, Kiraitu Murungi was intimidated and blackmailed and threatened with prosecution. He support, to support uh, the Azimio, uh, the UDM, and the rest. And therefore, the issue of mass defections is Kenya Kwanzaa is a coalition of the willing, both pre- and post-coalition agreement. So I want to, to appeal to my brother that they, they, should, they should know how to keep their partners within Azimio. And you remember, 
uh, you remember, is they amended the political parties act. We were being fought. They said they have the numbers, but the problem is that they were forcing to lock uh, most of these political parties within Azimio. And them have moved on. Let us allow people to make their own political choices and political rights under Article 37 and 38 so that you have a right to associate whoever you want. Therefore, it doesn't hold water. The people coming to Kenya Kwanzaa, th this is a government for everybody. This is not a Kenya Kwanzaa government. It is a government for and by the people of Kenya, uh, led by President William Ruta. So I want to tell my brother, make your spouses within the alliance happy. I can see there's a lot of fire even when they are fighting for leadership positions in the house, and they know where the, the rain started beating them. Uh, and we want to assure those who come to Kenya Kwanzaa that they, they are welcome, and the president has indicated that he's willing and ready to work with everybody. Uh, that On the issue of uh, the four commissioners, you know, I was shocked uh, when the Azimio, my brothers, including Jared, were demonstrating and resisting and saying that the IEBC and Wafula Chepokati did not conduct free, credible, and forever presidential election or election. But the same IEBC who presided an election in Nyando and declared Jared a winner. I didn't see Jared de declining to be sworn in because he didn't believe the elections were correct. So it is, if you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it. It is as simple as that. Well, what was because the Supreme Court was the, the, presidential uh, election, no, no, not Jared no, 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 I, election. I, that is, I'm building my argument. And you know, when no, Jared, Jared was speaking, no, no, when Jared was speaking, I was studiously <laughs> listening in silence. He no, should I've, listen I've to I've me in silence. Advanced. And you know, he's a senior <laughs> member, he's a ranking member of parliament. He should <laughs> keep quiet. Not yet. When, when, no, when, 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 oh, he's, he's coming to second term. He should keep quiet <laughs> when a senior <laughs> member and ranking member of the Harper House is speaking. <laughs> anyway, on a lighter touch. So the, these are some of the critical issues that we must ask ourselves. Election results were declared at the polling station. It was not declared. Uh, what happened was telling and verification in bombers. So, and in fact, what the Azimio, and in fact, that was the informed the decision about opening servers. Yeah. The IBC did something genius. They displayed the results at public portal. These people, by the way, they don't dispute the numbers. They're always talking about the process because they know by numbers uh, we beat them. And even the petition that they took to Supreme Court, their argument was that uh, the President William Ruta did not achieve 50 plus one. And I think that was the biggest. But in all and said and said, the Farmers Party of Kenya, just like any other Kenyan, they have a right to petition National Assembly. And this matter to pass, by the way, needs simple majority. So it's not a big deal because Kenya Kwanzaa has over 180 members of parliament uh, that can easily pass this petition, uh, uh, the, uh, request uh, or uh, direct the president to form a, a tribunal yeah. to investigate these, uh, these commissioners. And therefore, if they are found culpable, and we are not saying, and I, by the way, even as we look at this petition, there must be a judicial inquiry to what happened. Because the chaos we saw, I saw even elected governor, elected senator, punching Chebukati, I was there. Even hooligans speaking things, throwing. And deputy inspector of general or police DIG was standing and allowing goons to throw things. For us who were in bombers, we were shocked because this was a civil coup of democracy of the Republic of Kenya. Even if I agree, and by the way, the, the chief agent of uh, Azimio had a right to protest. But he's a lawyer, he knew that if they felt that what Chepukati was about to declare was not what they wanted to hear or they were not comfortable with, they had an option of going to Supreme Court, which they did. But they didn't need to cause chaos. I was there in Bombers of Kenya. It was embarrassing. So even as we look at these four commissioners, who, by the way, were smiling happily, beautifully on our screens, reading the results, confirming to the nation that they participated in collating verification, and they were assigned duties. Because in any way, the, the, the election results were already declared at the polling station. So what they were just doing is to verify, tally, and read the results. And they participated, by the way, up to the last minute. And they must tell the nation why did they want to put this nation or subvert the people, uh, the, the issues. Because let's assume Trevor, and this was the argument. If, for example, these four commissioners did not agree with the results, should they have voted on our vote? 
That is a good, number two, by the way, what Jared is, is going, you know, when, uh, when you are in a hole, you should stop digging it. Because the same, same four commissioners were appointed by President Uru Kenyatta and his brother, Raila Odinga, in Anche government in 2021. As as Kenya Kwanza and then, uh, when our presidential candidate, the current president, Dr. William Ruto, at that time, we didn't protest. Because these four commissioners had the assignment that had been cut out. And therefore, when they were in bombers and they realized they could not sway yeah. Chabukati and the other commissioners and the, 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 the IABC, the only way they had to save face was by walking out. And we know what they were doing, who was protecting them and what they were doing. So they must tell them, uh, by the way, what is shocking, they have also said we agree with the decision of the Supreme Court on them. I agree on the issue of uh, co uh, the issues of dysfunctional about the institutions. Yeah. Those are matters of internal issues of corporate governance. And I think IBC will keep uh, better because uh, my brother, Jared, when the uh, Supreme Court nullified elections in 2017, it was the guiding line of uh, Wafula Chabukati and IABC to follow, which they did it. And, and you know, in, if a decision is made, IABC was new. These are some of the things that you could always improve at the IABC. On the issue of um, Supreme Court decision, and I think, uh, you know, if there are investigations and violation of the law, this is the work of DCI and DPP to do, and we opt to. But, but finally, even as we look at the four commissioners, as I said in my opening remarks, we must form a judicial inquiry. Because the affidavits that were filed in Supreme Court had damning information. We want to know why there were security laps at the bombers of Kenya. Okay. Yet the police were there. Who was responsible? Who was coordinating until Kenyans uh, could do, do, see, see, saw uh, scenes that were not palatable for our growing democracy. And, and I, by the way, I want to appeal to our members of Parliament of Kenya, Kwanzaa, that this petition should be processed expeditiously, allow the president to form tribunal. You know, it is the principle of natural justice. Let these four commissioners go and tell that tribunal yeah. the reason they disagreed. We are Kenyans, we'll be ready to reason. Okay. If they convince the country that the position they took uh, by walking away from bombers, was legal and lawful and constitutional, then no one will, will remove them from their offices. Okay. But if they were there with the intention of trying to subvert the will of the people, yeah. they will be forgiven, but they must face. And I have said this on several occasions. If there was commission or uh, omission or commission by any officers who participated in an election, they are forgiven, but they must face full consequences of the law because okay. that's how we protect our democracy all right let me bring up some feedback really quick and then take closing remarks from you briefly and give you an update here there's been a message that has been sent through on some sad news after the demise of the baringo deputy governor philip Kipmore. the deputy president has sent in his condolence message i've just received an update here